Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi, wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of you at Masjid Al-Furqan in Georgia. This is your brother Isa Wood. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As we begin the blessed month of Ramadan, we are reminded in the Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون O oh, you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may become people of taqwa and then we know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam said, Buni al-Islam wa ala khams, that the religion of Islam is founded upon five pillars. Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah, to bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and to bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. Wa iqam is salah, wa ita is zakah, and that is to additionally pray your five daily prayers on time, to give your zakat annually, to make hajj to the sacred house in Mecca, the Kaaba, and of course to fast the month of Ramadan. And for the believer, we hear an ayah, we hear an authentic hadith, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We immediately hear and we obey. And so that's the reason that we're doing what we're doing right now, which is fasting the entire month of Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. However, it's not wrong for us to ask, well, what's the wisdom behind this? And so I'd like to cover three basic points, three important benefits that inshallah ta'ala, all of us are gonna get out of this month, how we can maximize it, and things that might prevent us from getting those benefits. The first benefit on our list is that we will get a physical benefit. SubhanAllah, when you abstain from food and drink and any kind of procreational activities from dawn to sunset each day, you know you give your body a chance to focus its energies elsewhere. We've all heard of a 24-hour restaurant. In my state, they call them IHOP. They call them uh, Waffle House, right? They're open any time of day. You can go eat, you can go drink, you know, midnight, eight in the morning, 5 p.m., 24 hours a day. And while that's happening, after each table leaves, the waitress or waiter will come and wipe things down and fill up the salt shaker, so forth and so on. But, you know, after you've done that for weeks on end, maybe even months on end, the grit and the grime start to build up because you've never really had a chance to do a deep cleaning. So all 24 hour restaurants will eventually shut their doors for at least a few hours or maybe even a few days to do a deep cleaning. Well, that's what you and I are doing whenever we take that month every year to abstain from dawn to sunset. We're actually giving our digestive system, at least the upper part of it, a break. And we don't often realize how much energy in our body is expended on digesting food. So once the body doesn't have to focus all its attention on processing what you eat and drink, it can now turn its energies to other parts of the body. And so it can repair and it can clean out all of the junk that you've accumulated all year. And so many of us will probably get a headache on the first couple of days. Don't worry. That's just the body cleaning you up. So that by the time Ramadan's over, inshallah ta'ala, right? Your body's in very, very good shape. Your immune system is high, right? You've gotten the physical benefit of the month. But what might prevent us from getting that benefit is if we do the following thing, which is wrong. At the beginning of each day, when we start our fast, we make a huge plate of food. Or at the end of the day, whenever we break our fast, we eat the equivalent of one or two meals worth of food. You know what I mean? The Prophet wasallam said, that no vessel in the human body is filled worse, worse than the stomach. It is enough for the son of Adam to eat a few morsels of food to give them strength. 
However, if they insist on having more than a third of their stomach for food, a third of their stomach for water, and a third of their stomach for breathing. Unfortunately, today we see many people in the community eating the entire stomach for food and then expanding the walls of the stomach with drink. And then they certainly don't even have enough left to really breathe properly by the time they're finished. And you all know what I mean. So do your best this Ramadan. Don't gorge yourself on food because what you end up doing is actually harming your body by doing that. And the whole point of fasting, at least the physical aspect of it, is to help clean you up. What about the second benefit? The second benefit is a mental benefit. We mentioned the ayah at the beginning of this talk that kutiba alaykum al-siyam, the reason Allah has prescribed fasting for you, la'allakum tattaqun, so that you become a person of taqwa, meaning you become conscious of Allah. And I always tell people the story, imagine that I am a brand new Muslim and tomorrow, it's my first day of Ramadan, and I forget to tell everybody at work that I'm a Muslim and that I'm fasting. So I go to work in my big high-rise building, and then at 12 o'clock noon comes, someone is knocking on the door. It's the food delivery guy. He comes every day. It's paid for by the company. He walks in, sets the food down on the table, and leaves. Uh-oh, I forgot to tell him I'm fasting. I'm all alone. Sure does smell good. I didn't grow up fasting. No one's looking, but Allah's looking. The angels are recording. The Quran says I have to do this. The prophet also emphasized it. I know on the day of judgment, if I do it, I'm going to get a beautiful reward. But if I didn't, I can be punished. You see, more than anything, fasting brings alive iman inside of you because it's something you do sincerely for the sake of Allah. But what's the mental benefit you get of it? Well, at night, and during the day, you're going to be reading the Quran from cover to cover. You started at the beginning of the month at the beginning, and by the end of the month, you finished the entire book. And additionally, you're going to be praying tarawih and tahajjud, and you're going to be listening to the entire Quran recited from cover to cover. Now, what might that do for the human mind? Well, when we go to the beginning of the Quran, we find... In Surah Al Fatiha, guide us to the straight path. And then, as soon as we get to Surah Al Baqarah, we have Alif Lam Mim. That this is the book about which there is no doubt a guide for people of taqwa. And the whole month you've been fasting to give you. Taqwa. And so now you can be a person who's guided. So what's the guidance? It is the Quran. And so in the month of Ramadan, you're fasting to increase your taqwa. You're covering the entire book so that by the time Ramadan is over, the entire book has been refreshed on your mind. And once again, I'm not talking about hif. I'm talking about memorization. I'm talking about a review of the contents of the Quran. So that now for the rest of the year, you've propelled yourself physically by cleaning your body up to be strong and mentally by reviewing the guidance. And so you have a mission for the rest of the year, which is to do what? To live like a Muslim, not part time, but full time, right? Say indeed that my prayer, my rites of sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of everything, right? And you can't really live and die for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't even know what he's told you to do. And so that's why you get the mental benefit in the month of Ramadan. Now, what about the last benefit, the spiritual benefit? The spiritual benefit is in the following ayah of the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullah O you who believe, have taqwa. What are you doing in Ramadan? Getting taqwa. 
and believe in Allah's Messenger, the Prophet Muhammad meaning believe in him and follow him. Yu'tikum kiflaini min rahmati. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to you two very important things. His mercy. وَيَجَعَلَّكُمْ nura And nur. تَمْشُونَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ rahim. And by this nur, you will be able to walk throughout the earth and you'll receive Allah's forgiveness from that. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. What is this nur that Allah is going to give you? Hmm. So there's an entire chapter in the Quran called An Nur. And in it you have the ayat, Allahu Nur Samawati Wal Ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the nur of the heavens and the earth. And additionally, Allah says an interesting comment in this ayah. He says, Nurun ala nur. Now, when you read the uh, tafsir of this ayah, one of the great commentators of tafsir, Imam Fakhruddin al Razi, rahimahullah, mentions in his explanation of Nurun ala nur that this is when the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches the aql of the human being and then it becomes actualized in their life. And it allows them to see the world as it really is. We know the Prophet used to say, Allahumma arinal haqqa haqqan wa ruzuqan attiba'a wa arinal batila batila wa ruzuqan attiba'a. Oh Allah, let us see truth is truth and follow it and let us see falsehood is falsehood and keep us away from it. And he used to also say, Allahumma arinal ashya'a kamahi. Oh Allah, allow us to see things as they really are. So what does that mean? So imagine for a moment, brothers and sisters in Islam, that you're walking through the city and you see all the beautiful houses, all the beautiful cars. You go into the houses, you see all of the beautiful belongings. You see the beautiful degrees hanging on the wall, PhD, masters. You see the boats, you see the tall buildings, you see the businesses. And to these eyes, these physical eyes that a believer and a non-believer have, it all looks beautiful, doesn't it? But to the believer who has taqwa, who's in a good physical state, who's following the messenger of Allah, and who's reviewed the contents of the Quran, everything doesn't look so pretty. Because they know that that house was purchased with riba, interest. And that car was purchased with riba, interest. And that degree on the wall, yeah. She got that, he got that from borrowing money on interest to go to school. And that business borrows money on interest. You see, all of this, most of it, is the result of riba. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about riba in the Quran? If you and I don't give it up, fa'dhanu biharbin min Allahi wa rasuli, then take notice of war from Allah and his messenger. Very stern warning about this sin. And so suddenly the house doesn't look so pretty anymore because you're not just seeing with these eyes. Now you're seeing with the eye of the heart because nurun ala nur, right? The revelation is now in your head and you begin to see the world as it really is, not as it appears to the eyes. And so that house might as well be a house in Jahannam because of the punishment the person is going to receive in the afterlife for having borrowed money on interest to buy it. So brothers and sisters in Islam, in conclusion, the three main benefits that a person receives in the month of Ramadan is physical, mental, and spiritual. But what will prevent us from getting the last two is if we do not open Allah's book and read it. And when we do, we read it 95 miles an hour, right? As quickly as we possibly can. Or we're reciting it in prayer as quickly as we possibly can. So quickly that we don't even have time to think about what's being said or what it means. We have no understanding of it. So we lose that spiritual benefit and that mental benefit. 
So brothers and sisters in Islam, I advise you and advise myself, eat properly, pick up the Mus'haf and read it. And also learn to see the world as it really is. Now that I've said that, why Ramadan? Why not any other month of the year? I mean, why don't we fast 30 days in Muharram, right? Why don't we fast 30 days in Rajab? Why do we fast in Ramadan? Did you know the word Ramadan is only in the Quran one time? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran hudallin nas wa bayyinatin min al-huda wal-furqan ila akhir al-ayah. That Ramadan is the month Allah revealed the Quran. Oh, yeah, this book over here as a guidance for all people, not just Muslims, but every single person on earth and a way for people to tell right and wrong so that they can see the world as it really is and make the world as it really is. So the whole point of this month of fasting being in Ramadan is to honor the month in which Allah revealed the Quran to guide every single person on earth. So it then logically follows, how does that guidance even happen if believers like me and you who are getting all these benefits don't turn to the non-believer who doesn't have any of the benefits, any of the guidance, and give it to them? So brothers and sisters in Islam, as we end this bayan today, I want you to think about the importance of making sure that your neighbor, classmate, coworker, customer, and patient is allowed to receive the same benefits that you are. So what you can do right now to make sure something like that happens, brothers and sisters in Islam, is you can head on over to the Forcon Project website and click on Donate. And what you're doing is you're sponsoring the distribution for free of English and Spanish translations of the Quran to non-Muslims all over North America. For example, you can sponsor an entire box of Quran for $104, and this will be distributed for you. We don't have to send them to you. We'll do the work. Don't worry. They'll go to prisons, hospitals, dorm rooms, retirement communities, Dawa organizations all over the country. They will be able to receive Quran on your behalf. And that is a sadaqa jariya because you're leaving behind ilm and nafia, beneficial knowledge. So sponsor as many boxes as you can. It would be really great if this community would try to reach a goal of 50 boxes of Quran. That will allow us to distribute over 2,500 copies on your behalf. But of course, it's Ramadan, so why not double that number and do 100 boxes? I mean, aren't deeds multiplied during this month after all? So I'll end just by showing you one person who received a Quran through our program, and I'll tell you his story. <laughs> Bismillahi walhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. We'll begin with God bless his name. We praise him and we thank him. Yes. And we ask him to send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad. Yes. Now, today we have with us brother today, and I didn't say those words back to back on purpose. His name is actually today. But it's not spelled like T-O-D-A-Y, is it? No, it's spelled T-A-D-A-E. Okay. And brother today has uh, expressed interest in joining the faith of Islam, so we've gone through explaining to him exactly what that means, and he seems to be very knowledgeable about what that means. So we encouraged him and invited him to come join the faith, and so that's what he's going to do right now, inshallah, God will. So, are you ready to say the shahada? I'm uh, been ready. I'm ready. Okay, so just repeat after me. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no deity. That there is no deity worthy of worship. Worthy of worship except God. Except the mighty God, mighty Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad. That Muhammad is God's messenger. Is God's messenger. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to say it in Arabic. You ready? Yes. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. 
ilaha ilaha illallah illallah wa wa ashhadu ashhadu anna anna muhammadan muhammadan rasul rasul allah allah uh, you said allah. perfectly allah. 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 brother today accepted islam four and a half years ago after he received a free copy of the quran after he had gotten in a high speed chase and was pulled over and had to go to jail for a few nights subhanallah he said he opened up the book as soon as he read guide us along the straight path he said that was the moment he felt like iman entered his heart and that was a free quran provided by our organization to that correctional facility some donor paid for that now i don't want to just stop there the good news gets better do you know that four and a half years later brother today is now brother yusuf hanif and he is the assistant imam of the islamic center of the piedmont allahu akbar do you know the Prophet ﷺ said, if you guide someone to a deed, you receive the reward of that deed without taking anything away from the reward of the one who did it. Meaning anything good that that brother did from the day he received that book, which inspired him by the permission of Allah to become a Muslim, the one who sponsored his Quran is going to get that, that reward as well. So brothers and sisters in Islam, go, donate as much as you can. This is the month of giving. The only thing the Prophet ﷺ did more of in the month of Ramadan was to give more. In other words, it wasn't a month about him. It was a month about all the people around him. So do your best. And if you want to do an additional good deed, go to sendthequran.com. You can send your neighbor, classmate, coworker, customer, and patient a copy for free or some brochures about Islam. All you do is pay the shipping and handling. The material is free. So we'll end today, brothers and sisters in Islam, by making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to forgive our sins. And O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to make this the best Ramadan we've ever had. So good that we come out on the other side better than we were when we started. Allahumma inna nasaluka bi anna lakal hamd ya hanan ya badi'u samawati wal ard ya dal jalali wal ikram ya hayyu ya qayyum Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina wa habibina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not cause our hearts to deviate from the path of Islam after you've guided us and indeed you are the one who bestows on whomever you choose اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us see truth is truth and follow it and falsehood is falsehood and keep us away from it اللهم أرنا الأشياء كما هي oh Allah let us see things as they really are اللهم جعل uh, um, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر يا رحم الرحمين oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to catch the night of Laylatul Qadr this year and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta samir alim, wa tuba alayna ya mulana, innaka anta tawab rahim, bi rahmatika ya arhamu rahimin. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika, wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, wa nastaghfiruka, wa natubu ilayk. Jazakum Allahu khayran, and don't forget, head on over to Forkan Project, and make your donation today. Jazakallah khair, wa salamu alaykum.